And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the second half of June 2023. I'm Jason Parent with the Rooster County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to focus on the services and programs that we offer up in the St. John Valley to people specifically in those communities. We offer these programs countywide as well, but we're going to talk about those in the Valley on this edition of ACAP Today. But before we get to that very important conversation with five great guests that do deliver services up in the St. John Valley, we're first going to get to the news and information that you can use again for this, the second half of June 2023. And we begin with the news and information information that you can use with this. The main homeowners assistance fund that we've been talking about for a while now is something that is available to folks and we want to just remind folks that it is available. The program sort of started out much more quietly than the rental assistance program and be behind the rental assistance program, if you will. But the homeowner assistance fund is there for folks who are struggling to keep up with their mortgage payments or other housing costs due to some related COVID-19 financial hardship. Now, to be eligible, you must earn less than 150% of local area median income and have sustained financial hardship, as I indicated, related to COVID-19 uh, at that after January of 2020. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're a homeowner and have any questions about that, there are a couple of ways that you can get more information. You can go to mainhomeownerhelp.org or call us here at ACAP at 764-3721. We have a couple of staff that work specifically in this program. It's a program administered now by Maine Housing. So if we can't get the answer for you, we can work with the folks at Maine Housing to help get the answers for you uh, as you look to potentially complete an application. We move on now to share about an event that's happening for our Southern Aroostook County viewers. We're going to be hosting a community baby shower. We did one of these in Presque Isle last year, and we will hopefully do one up in the St. John Valley at some point soon. Uh, this will be on Monday, June 26th at our 91 Military Street, our Holton Center there uh, near the fire station and near Madigan Estates in Holton on Military Street. Uh, we are going to be inviting community partners in for this event. Uh, it's a free community event, and it's especially for new and expecting parents. We will provide those new and expecting parents with information, resources, and giveaways, all to support them in, and their new baby. Uh, there will be a free welcome baby bag full of useful items uh, that will be available for the first 50 attendees. It's an event you don't want to miss, especially if you're an expectant parent or a new parent. Please contact Kim Garrett Michaud here at ACAP if you have any additional questions. Her number and contact information is there for you on the screen. We are also inviting folks, and we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, with one of our team members uh, as it relates to office services that we offer to individuals who are unemployed or underemployed, as well as to the employers across the region to help them uh, with their employment shortages. Uh, we do have coaches across Aroostook County that assist job, job seekers with creating plans to overcome barriers that lead to employment, and we're certainly encouraging folks to do that. We can provide extra help for things like tra work-related transportation costs. We can provide paid-on-the-job work experience, which is especially beneficial to both the employer and the prospective employee. Uh, refer to other social service agencies and programs within our agency to help sort of put all the pieces together so that you can focus on your employment or educational pursuits. Uh, we'll also help with one-on-one -on -one job search, resume writing and review, and all of those things necessary to get into employment. And of course, if your employment requires additional training and education, we can help cover the cost of tuition or costs for that training. Um, and other resources and application assistance. So if you are looking for employment at this time, or if you're an employer looking to connect with ACAP's Workforce Development Program to help get individuals into your enterprise uh, with on-the-job work experiences and other opportunities, give us a call here at ACAP at 764-3721 or reach out to your local office. Our team in Madawaska, our team in Holton can also help you uh, with this in that regard, but that central number can get you connected to anyone within the agency. Head Start fall registration is now open and we are taking uh, names for children, if three or four year olds in particular. Uh, these include mostly income eligible households, but we certainly do not deter folks from completing an application. We can sort of work with you. Our income eligibility person can work with you to help determine if you might be eligible through some other means. So please do consider if you have a child age three or four applying to be a part of our Head Start program. Uh, for more information, you can call directly at 768-3045, or you can complete the Early Care and Education 
application right on the ACAP website, and we certainly encourage you to do that. Again, uh, it is time now to get your child's name in for fall enrollment for our Head Start program. The winter energy relief program continues to be available even though the temperatures have turned up. We do realize that some folks may still be facing an energy emergency in their home. We do have limited funds available. The home energy assistance program has concluded for the season, but will resume in mid-July and we will be scheduling appointments shortly uh, with households. So you should be receiving your notification of a new appointment for this coming winter season uh, for the home energy assistance program within the next month or so. Um, but if you are facing a fuel emergency and your income is under the income eligibility guidelines based on the household size shown here on the screen, please do give us a call at 768-3053 so we can help you through the Winter Energy Relief Program. We are also able to help households now with uh, connectivity to uh, the internet. Um, and this is important to get high speed internet for free as many folks are doing more and more business uh, from home using internet. Um, and the uh, FCC's affordable connectivity program is available and can be connected through ACAP. There's a service discount of up to $30 a month for your internet provision. If you're on a qualifying tribal land, that can bump up to as much as $75 a month. There's also a de device discount for up to $100 per qualifying device. If you have any questions, you can go to the getinternet.gov website, or you can call us here at ACAP and we can help walk you through the process of registering for the FCC's affordable, affordable connectivity program. We are also reminding folks that our teen center is open at 24 North Street. The North Street Teen Center is a place for, for youth in particular, teens age 14 to 19, to hang out, to collaborate, to build community in a space made by teens for teens. They have free Wi-Fi, TV, games, a full kitchen and laundry facilities, study spaces and more. Uh, as the school year winds down or is coming to a close for most folks, uh, we will remind folks that this center does remain open through the summer months. It's a great place to go and have an opportunity to hang out with your fellow peers. And certainly as school has wound down for the year, if there are youth from the St. John Valley and Holton who have a little bit more freedom in their schedule and are happening to come to Presque Isle anyway, it's a great opportunity for you to check out the Youth Center as well, because it is available for teens across Aroostook County. And we also remind folks, if you're facing an acute uh, issue of food insecurity, that there are community cupboards located across Aroostook County. They're operated by a number of different nonprofit organizations, uh, Boy and Girl Scout troops, and just community members and volunteers. Um, if you are in need of food assistance, you can contact us here at 764-3721 or visit our website for an Aroostook County Food Resource Guide. The community cupboards, like this one outside our 771 Main Street Customer Service Center in Presque Isle, are intended to help serve an acute immediate need, um, but we can certainly help connect you with resources that can provide more sustaining help for you if you are food insecure. And if there's any other information or services that you are in need of, if you're struggling with something at this time, we certainly encourage you to reach out to ACAP to contact us at 764-3721. We have navigators who are available to help connect you with a variety of programs, whether they're inside our agency or outside our agency. Um, and we have staff that know what those resources are and can help make those connections. So please do not be shy about calling us, especially if you are challenged at this time. Again, it's 764-3721. And with that, that's this week's news and information that you can use. I'm so pleased to welcome to the program five individuals who are in part responsible for the services that we deliver to folks in the St. John Valley in particular. Um, in no particular order, I'm just gonna go on the screen here. First is Karen Page, who's a professional and a leader within our early care and education programs and oversees our early care and education programs from Caribou North. Elena Sear is a native of Fort Kent, and she also works with our early care and education programs um, across Aroostook County, but obviously uh, with uh, being a native uh, as I am of the St. John Valley, certainly her heart uh, is there with the people of the St. John Valley, so she brings a lot of richness and context in, in this conversation. Emily Kenyon is a relatively new face for ACAP and is working with our Youth Homeless Demonstration Program, but can certainly connect folks with services across the ACAP system. Judy Jandro is a well-known figure in the St. John Valley, works especially out of our Fort Ken office, but is helping people throughout the St. John Valley as a coach and doing a wonderful job doing that. Thank you so much, Judy. 
And Conrad Edwards is also a relatively new face uh, working out of our Madawaska office and helping folks throughout the St. John Valley in his capacity as well. So welcome all of you. It's great to have you all in the program. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you, Jason. So I want to talk about Judy. I'm going to start with you because you're the you're you're, you're the folks you're, you're the face. I think folks from the St. John Valley on the screen maybe recognize the most. You're in the community and you've been there for a while. Um, talk about the services and the and the, sort of the work that we do up in the St. John Valley to basically try to connect people with as many services as possible and in your efforts to do that. Well, we have a variety of services that we offer, and um, that can include uh, the a type of navigation services that you were mentioning earlier, where we connect you um, to resources and supports within the agency or outside of the agency if we don't have that service available. Uh, primarily, I'm a um, coach um, here, a family coach for the uh, families that attend our Head Start Center. But also in the larger community, um, I, I am a family coach with people outside of the center, and we work with them um, with a holistic approach, meeting the whole family's needs. And that can be immediate needs, emergency needs, or uh, long-term goals that they choose, such as employment or returning to school. Right, Conrad Edwards. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to you next because you also provide some of those services uh, to a wider a scope of population up in the St. John Valley, working primarily out of our Madawaska office, but able to reach folks across the region. And you're a new employee here at ACAP, and I know that uh, part of your background and your drive is what led you to the agency. So maybe share what brought you first first and foremost to our agency, and and about the work that you're able to do with folks in the valley. Well. I was a beneficiary as a child uh, through CAP programs in Virginia when I was growing up. Um, I was born into pretty great poverty. Um, that area of Appalachia is historically even uh, recorded in movies about Sergeant Shriver. And um, so even though in the 70s it was getting better, it was, it was still rough. I, I went on through life. I joined the military and later became a a business administrator, a human resources administrator. But um, when we moved to this area after my wife retired from the Air Force, I really wanted to get involved in the community again. I started out working in the Children's Psychiatric Unit at Northern Maine Medical Center, but um, I left there to come to ACAP because I feel like I really needed to give back to the people that live in my community and strengthen my community like I was strengthened as a young man. So that's that's my primary motivation is working with people, not to give them a handout, but just a, a hand up and uh, allow them to understand that there are resources available to them that have been specifically made for them that they might not be aware of. And going forward with that, some of the programs that we offer here is just speaking in general terms, uh, weatherization for their house so that they save on their utility bill and they can use that money for other needs that they have or helping them to find employment. In Aroostook County right now, Maine Job Links has hundreds of jobs that are available here in Aroostook County specifically. And those are just the jobs that are listed on the Maine Job Links. It doesn't mean that those are the extent of jobs available. So I'm trying to work with people to find different uh, avenues for them to approach job either through uh, extending their education past high school so that they can obtain certifications in different courses. Um, the Maine Department of Labor even has a Google initiative right now that I've been speaking with some of the high school counselors about trying to get students involved in that so that not only do they obtain a certification in a job field that would give them a good income, but then they also don't have to leave the area that they call home. They can work from home and things like that, I think are really, really good. Uh, we learned from COVID a lot of avenues for working from home that I think moving forward could help Aroostook County maintain its population, even grow its population while at the same time increasing the uh, wages that people earn. And so lifting more and more families out of poverty. That's the primary focus that I'm working on right now. 
So Conrad, I'm going to come back to you in just a little bit, and we're going to talk about how there's also an opportunity for employers to get connected uh, with those services that we provide and how they're a very important part of that puzzle. Um, but I, I think if I recall correctly from the stories that you've told me, your initial connection uh, with Community Action may have been through the Head Start program, correct? Yes, yes. I, uh, I initially... Uh, as a child, I went to um, the Head Start program when I was a child, and it really, it really impacted my life a great deal. Between that and uh, the programs that were available before and after school through different CAP programs, uh, really kept me out of trouble as a child, uh, got me interested in education, and pulled me from where I was born to into a different place. Not necessarily a better place, but um, just having a better knowledge of what was available that I wouldn't have known otherwise without the ACAP programs. So I'm going to use that as my transition to our next two guests who, who help lead and direct our early care and education programs, uh, specifically those up in the St. John Valley, um, Karen Page and, and Elena Sear, uh, both of whom um, have worked with our program for a few years now and are very familiar with the services up there and the, and the ever-evolving services that we offer up there as it relates to early care and education. And certainly, as Conrad indicated, as we're trying to help individuals access employment uh, for those that have young children. Children, one of the uh, most uh, often critical impediments to being able to, to really engage in the workforce is to ensure not only that their children are being taken care of, but that they have quality, a quality early childhood education experience. And I know that Karen and, Ele uh, and Elena, you both uh, focus on that uh, each and every day. Karen, let me begin with you by sort of providing a broad brush over uh, sort of overview of what we do offer for early care and education programs across the St. John Valley. Sure thing. Uh, we have a center right in the Fort Kent area um, that focuses on three and four year olds for the preschool age um, and provides Head Start services with access to Judy, our family coach. She's located right there in our center. Uh, she's a great asset to our team. Um, and with that comes the wraparound services of dental and health um, associates, um, access to Navigators for the family like Conrad, who can help families access heat and weatherization and all the wonderful programs they've already touched on. Um, we are partnering with the Unified School System, Valley Unified, um, and that's a new happening for the next program year. Um, so we will see some additional services throughout Madawaska, Frenchville, and Fort Kent to reach those families already in the public school system. Uh, and and share our services. Now, Elena, uh, Karen spoke about some of the unique um, opportunities, whether it's a family coach like Judy that families have the opportunity to work with or extended uh, work with health, dental, things of that nature. What else sets uh, the programming apart that we're able to offer not only in the St. John Valley, but across Aroostook County and the work that you specifically do to um, engage our teachers and those, those staff members who are working directly with the children? Well, one thing that Head Start is definitely trending towards are these partnerships with public school systems. And a big part of that is the pooling of resources. Um, coming from a CAP agency, that allows us to, to really give that comprehensive service delivery and to, to people that we're seeing in the classrooms. So not only the children, that we're serving, but it allows us easier access to the families of these children. And going into the school system, it, it also gives us a face in the school system as a whole. And, and also it allows us to pool resources with the school system, which is a win-win for, for both sides. Um, so it, it really is um, a great opportunity for a CAP agency as a whole. Now, I'm certain, I'm certain, Elena and Karen, that that helps make that transition from early care and education into the public school system that much easier when you have yep. those kind of relationships. Um, what have you seen in terms of the difference made and, and what have you been hearing from the school administrators that you're working with in terms of uh, the way that we're sort of seamlessly providing these services collaboratively with them? Absolutely. Um, so every year we work with our children that are transitioning into kindergarten or some families that choose public pre-K um, 
for many reasons, but this partnership that we've had with the public school like Fort Kent has has made it easier for in, the teachers that are going to be getting these children to meet them earlier, to um, have meetings with our staff to talk about what we're learning and what our curriculum looks like and what our, what our assessments look like, um, any needs that the, our children may be facing, any children with IEPs or special services um, get a one up, so to speak, because they we can access all these resources um, early with early intervention in our centers and then continue that through the public school by melding our, our resources, like Elena said. And, and as a practice-based coach, it also allows me to bring those coaching services to teachers in the public school system, which typically would not be available to them. Great. So your work actually extends directly into public schools as well, Elena. Yes. All right. Let's bring Emily Kenyon into this conversation now. Emily, we've talked about sort of individuals who are seeking employment. We've talked about the very young children, but you work with all, another unique population of folks up in the St. John Valley, and those are particularly youth, uh, teenagers, um, and a little bit beyond teen years. Tell us about, uh, unmute and tell us about what the things are that you work on for our agency here at ACAP. Yes, so I work with the Youth Homeless Demonstration Project, and I work with youth ages 12 to 24, um, mostly ones that are currently suffering, um, not suffering, but ones that are experiencing homelessness. Um, many times they are on the streets, and we will help them in while well, we will start off, and if they want to, I can help them apply to get into the homeless shelter. Um, and then once they're into the homeless shelter, or even if they don't want to go there, they can stay where they're located and they can come to the Hope and Prosperity Center in Presque Isle and meet with the staff there one on one every day um, to start applying for workforce if they, that's what they want to do. Um, if it's a, something simple, like they just need help getting an ID to get a job, I can help them with that. Um, I can also help them with finding a place to live permanently. Um, so it's really um, a great thing to be a part of. Um, and I love the different ages that it is. It's not just primarily focused on 16 or 18 year olds. It goes up to 24. Um, and with our adolescents 12 to a little bit under 18, um, we also try to facilitate the families into it as well. So if they are experiencing some homelessness, we can see if maybe there's a family situation where we can try to place them with an aunt or a sister or something like that with them being a minor. So it's really great. <laughs> And I know that I've seen some successes that we've been able to post in the past where we can actually help get the youth housed, like get yes. them an apartment or the like. And I'm sure that as you continue your work, you're just starting your work with ACAP and, uh, and help get your first youth housed. That's going to be a, a, quite a moment of pride for you, I can imagine. Yes, for sure. All right. Well, let's circle back through uh, Conrad, what Conrad Edwards was talking about the work that we do with employers, and I know, Judy Jandro, that you've been working with employers in the St. John Valley for most of your professional career, and I know that as a family coach, you also, um, and, and working uh, in, side by side with others in the agency, do help particularly the parents of the youth that you're working with connect with education and employment opportunities. Why is that so critically important in the work that we are able to do and that you're able to do specifically up in the Valley? Um, it, it's important and it's great work um, to help support um, these families uh, reach their goals and to see them flourish and, and um, meet their goals, whether that be education or, or getting a better paying job so that they don't have to rely on the system. And those are their words. Um, it, it's, a, it's a freedom and it's a sense of empowerment um, that it gives them. So it's 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 good work. Talk about um, how you how you help measure because it's not just like a feeling of, of of empowerment and social and economic mobility. You actually work with your families, and there's a scoring system, and you're able to track earned income versus um, income from from state and federal uh, resources. How do you measure success um, with the families that you work with? Uh, we we complete assessments at the beginning and periodically. 
uh, throughout working with them. Um, but also uh, we we set goals, uh, sh short short term steps, long term steps, long term goals, and and we review those goals at periodically at least every ninety days um, to to show them uh, the success that that and and the progress that they're making. And that they, them, the families in this particular case, really are the ones, if we're talking about a vehicle, they're the ones in the driver's seat, correct? Absolutely. It, it takes a village, but they're the, they're the ones driving the bus. Right. Well, the other part of that village that's required, Conrad Edwards, are employers in the region. And, and I think that um, we do need some more assistance in that regard uh, from local employers who are willing to help not only the families, but the individuals that we work with um, at ACAP to help them become specifically more economically mobile uh, as they look into workforce. So maybe if you could capture that uh, for us and what our ask is of local employers. Well, a lot of the local employers don't realize that uh, we offer employment services for people that we even pay for for a period of time while they're initially getting started with an employer. Um, helping some of the employers that I've spoke with over the phone uh, realize that if they register on main job links that we can send people their way for uh, short-term apprenticeships. I've talked to employers who need concrete finishers uh, that there's just a shortage of people in construction in general for the infrastructure of the county. Uh, there are long wait lists for electricians, and there are employers that would love to train uh, apprentices that are electricians, uh, Ken L. Electric or um, uh, Ken Pelletier uh, there in Fort Kent as well in Wallagrass. So there are lots of employers that need these critical positions to be filled and I've been speaking with them and trying to reach out to other employers. So if there is an employer that's in need of employees to fill critical positions, we can help fill those positions. They don't have to go out on a limb on their own to try and fill those positions. Those are things that we can actually help through some of our workforce programs that we have um, for those initial trainings. And it also benefits some of the employees on short-term basis as well. Uh, just gaining initial work experience. We have a work experience program that we can pay for for a while through ACAP. So it's the onus isn't always on the employer. There's a, a means for them to obtain the needed people um, without taking all the risk. Uh, that's what ACAP has in place are programs that will help train individuals in critical positions for a period of time, as well as uh, just gain work experience in general. So if the employers wanted to reach out to us, um, I'd be happy to walk them through the steps of employing uh, people, but helping them to register on main job links uh, so that people will automatically be sent to them, resumes, applications, and things like that. So it, it cuts down even on their office obligations. It's, it's a big help overall. And I think that the St. John Valley could definitely benefit from more employers being aware of the programs that we offer employees, but that also benefit those employers as well. So I just want to make sure that we capture this for, for spe specifically business owners, uh, entrepreneurs to understand that there is not only in this era of, you know, employee workforce shortages across our region, across the country, there's a resource for employers to be able to not only access a human resource, but to access a fiscal resource to be able to support that human resource through an initial, an, an initial sort of introductory and training period? Absolutely, yes. Um, the work experience and then there are extended uh, joint ventures where we can pay up to 50% sometimes of an employee's initial wages uh, over a period of uh, several months for an employer. So these are sound resources uh, that are set in place and ready to go for employers if they'd like to tap into that. Absolutely. Right. Now, I know that in early care and education programs, we measure, um, Karen and, and Elena, we measure uh, children and families holistically across 19 different domains through the software that you use in Child Plus. And so some of those metrics and those measurements. So really, um, if Conrad or Judy are working uh, with a household, let's say Judy in particular, because she works with, uh, with families with young children, 
they're not only looking at those child development milestones and even the employment, but they're looking really holistically, Judy mentioned the term whole family, at a number of different uh, measurements of success within the family and providing the supports to help keep them both out of crisis into stabilization and advance and move, move forward. Talk about uh, some of the things that are being measured um, across the lifespan from early childhood development to food security. Yeah, uh, we do have that resource in our um, system. We also work very closely with the families. Our teachers build great working relationships with each family. And I find that um, they are the, the quickest way to get connected to your family coaches. They, um, the families share information with us. We gather information during home visits. Um, we conduct four of those during a program year. Um, center visits as well. We talk about the child's development and um, the their academic success and things, our goals. We make goals as well for the child and the family. Um, but during that time, you learn a lot about the family's needs and the family, um, if they are experiencing food insecurity or something, something that we can have reach out to um, resources within our agency or outside of our agency. Um, we learn a lot during those visits and that's a great way for us to bring Judy on board or Conrad. And Elena, that also works with um, some of the teachers that you're working directly with and making sure that they're aware that those resources are available as well, because sometimes those, those are things that are caught in the classroom by the classroom teacher as well. And, and absolutely, um, as a classroom coach, a lot of times I learn about things just through challenges that the teachers are having. Um, so, you know, a lot of times in talking with teachers, that's where we find out, okay, maybe we need to involve Judy as a family coach. Uh, maybe the parent needs help looking for work, so we need to refer them to Conrad. Maybe the child has some behavioral issues or some behavioral challenges, maybe it's time to talk with Karen and get a referral done to AMHC. Um, so a lot of times the teachers are central and the information that they provide is central to getting family services. And Emily, as it comes to the work that you do, and one of the things that you noted to sort of round out this conversation where we're, we're sort of talking about employment opportunities and connecting uh, our customers with the opportunity to economically and socially become more mobile. Um, you certainly, I imagine, want to encourage um, employers in the St. John Valley to, to maybe give some of the youth that you're working with a chance, because oftentimes it's that opportunity, that chance uh, that can help turn their lives around. Yes, for sure. Um, I think there's a lot of players around that are willing to um, work with us at ACAP. I think the most important thing we can do is reach out to them and get the word out there. All right. Well, speaking of that, let's just do one last question, sort of go around the around the Zoom room here, if you will, in this recording uh, before we close out this edition of ACAP today to sort of get your any last thoughts, anything you wanted to mention that you didn't mention, and then any specific message that you'd like to give to the folks across the St. John Valley about accessing services within our agency. We'll sort of go in the same order we have been. So Judy, Jandra, I'll start with you. Um, just uh, a ACAP offers a variety of services and we have, as, as you can see uh, from the, the group of people here, uh, people that specialize in different areas and, and reach out if you want more information, um, whether that be for something urgent uh, and or if you want information for um, uh, any of our programs. I know we haven't even touched on, we did a little bit in some of the early care and education related to health, but we haven't really touched on WIC or prevention programs. There's just really so much more. So those programs are all offered in the St. John Valley as well. And we certainly would uh, welcome you to contact us and, and any of the folks on this screen to help connect you with all of the services we offer up there. Conrad Edwards, your thoughts, last words, anything you've forgotten to mention in this broadcast that we want to make sure gets out there to folks in the St. John Valley and your message to, to folks in your region? Just that these are their tax dollars at work. Um, you know, they, they pay taxes and we receive grants. Um, this is what ACAP is about, is strengthening communities. 
Um, it's very important that people understand that by them being strengthened by the programs that we offer, um, they're actually helping their community, not just themselves. So overall, the entire community is, is helped by each person uh, obtaining a better place in life. Yeah, and that is a, a very important message, I would say, Karen Page and Elena Sear, we've all witnessed that, at, you know, we've we've done the top of main trade. So the last couple of years, I've worked shift with both of you, where we're talking with folks who, some seniors in particular, who have been reticent to maybe apply for heating assistance or families that haven't applied for WIC or considered early care and education programs. Um, because, you know, they don't, they want to make sure that they're available for people really in need, but really their services and, and programs available to folks across the region, um, and they really should not be shy about reaching out. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that get your applications in for Head Start as we're planning for the next uh, school year. It starts in September, and doesn't matter location right now because we can capture with these new partnerships, we can capture three and four-year-olds and even some fives maybe um, in our Madawaska, Frenchville and Fort Kent areas. Elena Sear, your last comments. And, and I think just to mirror off what Conrad said, you know, I've grown up in the Valley and, and I know um, some of the challenges that the Valley faces. Don't, don't worry, please reach out, ask questions. If we don't offer the service ourselves, we will we will help you find it. That's right. Very good advice. Emily Kenyon, as one of our newer team members and one working with youth, I'm going to let the last word be yours. Yes, I just want to remind everyone that um, to not be ashamed to reach out, either call um, the ACAP number, or come into an office, um, any location, um, someone will get you to the help that you need of any kind. And if it's not something that we specifically can do, um, we will most definitely get you the help that you need. And I also wanna remind everyone, um, another thing that I forgot to mention regarding the Hope and Prosperity Center for our youth is when they come in and receive help during the day, they can also receive a free meal that day as well. So for someone that can mean a lot to them. Yeah, important. That is also the case at our teen center as well. So if there are teens, also another good way to potentially connect with some of the programs that we offer as well for families and for teens uh, and youth in particular. So, all right, Karen Page, Elena Sear, Emily Kenyon, Judy Jondro, and Conrad Edwards, thank you so much for joining me on this edition of ACAP today to help illuminate the wonderful services and programs that we deliver to people in the St. John Valley. And really, those programs are offered across Aroostook County as well, uh, proudly by a team that's almost 200 strong across the region. Um, and these are just five of those faces uh, delivering those services. So please do reach out to someone that you know with ACAP if you need to access services. Before we leave all of you, we're gonna bring you our snapshot of the week. And for that, we also travel up to the St. John Valley. We actually travel uh, to Autotronics um, in Frenchville uh, where this unit is sitting outside awaiting its customization. This is the future mobile service unit for a Rooster County Action Program. It's got some refinishing work to do inside to make it more of an office setting uh, to be able to serve folks across the region in the valley and beyond, specifically in communities where we don't have an office presence. Uh, it will also get a new wrap on the outside to denote it as the ACAP mobile service unit. Uh, that will be coming and it will be here before the end of 2023 in its finalized form. So hopefully coming to a community near you and actually uh, our Commitment is that its first ride is up into the St. John Valley. It will be headed to the town of Van Buren, not because it's my hometown, but because it was part of the inspiration uh, for the mobile service unit from the Van Buren and now Rural Resiliency Group up in Van Buren and Limestone uh, that encouraged us to try to open an office in that region. And those things sometimes aren't possible with funding, especially in smaller communities, but we recognize the need to be present in those communities. And this is sort of a way for us to be able to do that and do it on wheels and bring the services and programs directly to folks. So be looking, be on the lookout for it late, later this year as we get the mobile service unit on the road. With that, that's this, uh, this second half of June's edition of ACAP Today. We'll be back in early July with a brand new edition. Until then, have a great couple of weeks, everyone. We'll see you later.